Hello everybody and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today we're going to try something completely different. Um, we're going to try Japanese um, cherry blossoms. Now, uh, when I first started watercolor, I painted in the oriental fashion with ink and Chinese watercolors. And then I moved over to Western watercolors and focused on Western landscapes. Uh, on Facebook, my time hop or, you know, like a three years ago this day type of deal popped up and it was a painting of cherry blossoms that I had done. And I figured, why not try and paint in Western watercolors that subject matter? So we're going to go ahead. We're going to use the Hake brush. Uh, I'll probably switch brushes around. We'll try different things. And I'm going to not use ink. I'm going to try to stay within Western watercolors. And we'll see what happens. So I'm mixing up a big old mixture of burnt umber and ultramarine. This I'm going to use as my main branch. And I'm going to kind of get dry brush effect. You have a mixture of colors, and a mixture of textures. A secondary branch. There you go. Keeping in mind that this is an 11 by 15 quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua which if matted will be to 11 by 14, 100% cotton. Hundred and forty pound paper. Cold press. And the cat's knocking stuff all over. And I'm gonna have the idea of a main trunk sitting off to this side. Before I had done that, I could have rotated the paper in any fashion and found one that I had liked. But I'm gonna go in this direction. We could even get a light wash. The illusion of stuff in the background. Now I'm going to weave in and out little branches. I'm going to leave gaps in between them. And amongst these, I will paint the blossoms. When I was learning the, um, the Japanese Chinese style of painting, um, I apologize grouping those two together if that's not correct, but I had um, a whole bunch of you know, different books and different resources. And one fantastic resource is Henry Lee on um, YouTube, uh, Blue Heron Arts. So he has a lot of different videos and I think he has, so he has a lot of free videos and he, I'm not sure if he still has it, but he had like a, a, a teaching service, like a website that you would pay for and it had um, videos, uh, photos, diagrams, experiments, etc. So if that's something you're really interested in, check that out. Okay, let me switch gears. Let's grab a number, we'll grab the number one rigger. I'll try not to get too crazy with different brushes. And with this, I'm gonna continue these fine 
lines. Compositionally, it's probably not going to be amazing from the standpoint of I'm definitely doing, uh, there's definitely the concept of less is more in the Chinese painting. There's a whole bunch of interesting philosophies that add into things. Um, so that's something that you may want to you know, explore and look into. But right now, it's just having fun and seeing if I remember how to do any of this. And like I said, trying to carry it over into uh, our Western watercolors. Okay, so that being said, oh, by the way, this paper is completely dry. Um, I didn't go wet and wet or anything like that. This is just burnt umber and ultramarine mixed together. Uh, I'm going to now draw the blossoms in. Well, there's, there's a few different approaches from what I remember for blossoms. You can go in and put in little, like the buds, little circles for them. And near the end, I believe there was more blossoms, like the end of a branch, uh, little buds. You could either kind of draw them out. You would use the ink to do that. This is, I'm just using our mixture of ultramarine and burnt umber. And then there was different orientations of flowers themselves. I should do a separate video on that, on the shapes of the flowers and the masses and whatnot. But it being so long of having done it, this is just me kind of refreshing my memory. I'm allowing myself just to kind of make more gestural marks as opposed to, I'll find a spot to do one. I'm like one, two, three, four, five, kind of overlapping petals. And you could take just your petal color and paint that in instead of making these marks. What I'll wind up doing is painting on top of these with a petal color. What color I'm gonna use, I'm really not sure. We'll see what I have on hand. And we could probably splatter uh, petal color as well. And just have fun with it. Just get gestural. Weave things in and out. But remember, contrary to what I'm doing, less is more. <laughs> Okay. There was, in some, um, like, like I had said, there was different approaches to the blossoms themselves. There was uh, taking the fine brush and drawing in a little, uh, I think what, pronounce it stamens, stamen, stamen, and then taking uh, either the Chinese white and the uh, yellow and kind of dotting the stamen. We'll do that, but I'll try to stay away from gouache when we get to that step. So I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to dry it off and we're going to start playing around with color. So at this stage with the flowers and the petals, you can really play with anything. Um, you know, there's a lot of beautiful watercolors out there and um, I, I, I don't really have a lot of those beautiful colors because <laughs> as you know, if you watch the channel, I usually like to paint, you know, uh, dark moody scenes. I also like to be able to open up my tubes of paint, which uh, is not happening at the moment. 
have this little um, crab claw cracker that can sometimes mess up the tube. So you want to make sure you have your paint already in there on the end so it doesn't twist the tube as much. I may have to go run some water over these. I will be right back. I apologize. All right. I'm back. I just had went in the other room, grabbed, well, pour some water over the tube, and then it opened like that. So I put out some quinacridone rose, some alizarin crimson, and some lemon yellow. If we grab any other colors, I'll let you know. But you can use just, just a whole slew of colors for these guys. Um, and with the squirrel mop, you can really go in and have fun with it. So I'm gonna play around with different densities of petals in fact we could splatter a little bit So we have different sizes, we have different densities, more and less in spots. Let's mix in a little, that was alizarin, here's the quinacridone rose. I don't know if I said quin gold, I apologize if I said that. Um, well, that is a really pretty color. We'll splatter that into our mix. Okay. Now I'm going to dry this off. I'm going to play around with the lemon yellow on top of this. So I'm going to pause the camera. All right, for the most part, the painting's dry. That uh, wet and watery mix was taking quite a while. Now I just have some almost straight from the tube lemon yellow that I'm just going to dot in. I guess this would be the top of the, the stamen, it would be the pollen on the stamen. I'm, I apologize for not being up on my plant biology. And just like before, vary the density. And of course, have fun with it. Now I'm going to take this, I'm going to mix it in a little bit of ultramarine. Get a green going. Not sure how much, how well it'll show up in here. But from what I recall, it would take a green, and I think it was a... Um, a green pigment based off of the mineral malachite and this is just lemon yellow and ultramarine and it'd be put as like little highlight emeralds that's what they call it like little pieces of moss on the uh 
the trunk and the branches. So little accent marks. In fact, they may or may not have taken their ink, and I'm just going to do it here with the ultramarine and the burnt umber, and do little hook accent marks as well. To just kind of little add little emphasis on spots. And you can go in. And you can do this as like meticulous or as loose as you want. You know, it's all about having fun and experimenting. But you know. That being said, anything I do on this channel, you are more than welcome to follow along. Um, anything that I do. You can sign your name to it. Uh, I think you follow along and paint, and you are more than welcome to sell it. I want you guys to succeed, and I want you guys to be able to afford art supplies. And if you would like to support this channel, I have a link down below to my Patreon account. Also, liking and subscribing is very helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, please let me know down below. Um, if you don't like the painting or the process of the videos, let me know, you know, be polite, be respectful, but let me know what you would like to see and how you would, you know, any suggestions you have. I if we should splash a little bit of, uh, we'll splash a little green for fun. It's a lot of green. And then we'll splash a little lemon yellow and we'll put a mat over it and see how everything looks lemon yellow splashed get this out the way somewhere where the cats won't climb all over it we'll dry it and we'll sign it now i'm going to sign it in you know just my name but in the chinese japanese painting you could sign it or there might be some poetry on the side there's the seal that you can stamp with um i used to have a little uh, i learned the chinese character for a uh, beard because i have a long beard and I would um, actually <laughs> write that on the paintings. That was my little signature. Well, here's the results. Uh, let me show it from this angle. I hope you enjoyed. And if you follow along, I'd love to see your results. All right, you all have a great day, and I'll talk to you all soon.